Welcome to the Generation You Can podcast. I'm Varun Sriram. The marathon trial is not the only way to qualify for the Summer Olympics this weekend in Houston. Generation You Can has three international runners hoping to earn a trip to London through the Houston Marathon. Canadian marathoner Simon Byru joins us on the podcast. Simon, thanks for taking the time to chat. Just, um, you know, to start out with, there's a way to introduce yourself to our audience who may not know much about you. Um, just tell us a little bit about why you like to run, how you got started in running, uh, kind of your background in the sport. Sure. Um, you know, when I first started running, it was actually more of a punishment than anything. Uh, I got into a fight at school, and my great teacher decided that uh, the, the best punishment was to make me go out and join a track team for a couple of weeks. And, you know, I just I instantly fell in love with the sport. I love the fact that it's very individualistic. You know, what you put in is what you get out. And, you know, it's been a fun ride ever since then. And this is what, I think, 15 years now that I've been running, and I've been able to experience, you know, so many great things because of it, like traveling across the world, you know, racing in Portugal, racing in Japan, and, you know, a lot of these places I wouldn't have been going to if it wasn't for running. So I'm very grateful for the opportunities that running has given me. Now, the marathon distance is something that uh, that you just uh, have started competing in recently. Um, did you ever see yourself as a marathoner? Uh, when, when did when did the marathon become something that that seemed interesting or seemed like something that you wanted to do? Uh, yeah, you know, at first I really didn't uh, know too much about the marathon, and my coach brought it up in 2007, around 2007. And, you know, he's always been the type of guy who thinks long-term, and he basically told me, you know, his his goal for me was to run the marathon at the 2012 Olympics. So, you know, I was at the time I I thought he was crazy. I didn't even know exactly how you know what the distance of a marathon was, like to the exact specific amount. And you know, so eventually I warmed up to the idea. And you know, I just I feel like the marathon once I get it right is going to be my uh, strongest event because it plays to my strengths. You know, I've always been an endurance guy. Not always uh, the guy with the fastest kick at the end of the race. So I think it's going to be a, a fun ride once I figure out how to how to tackle the uh, 26.2 mile distance. What have you learned uh, in in your past experiences? Uh, you know, from New York uh, racing the marathon um, that you're going to take with you to Houston this time around. Well, I think for starters, I went into New York with a track mentality. You know, the marathon is unlike any other distance race, and I just don't think. I was giving it the amount of respect that it rightfully deserves. So there was, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, things that I did going into that race. Uh, we adjusted in practice, and you know, I'm confident that I really worked on the little things that, you know, caused me to drop out in New York. So you know, I think going into this race, uh, I'm expecting to make some big jumps, but you know, it's it's still a learning process. This by far isn't going to be my best race. You know, I I think no matter what I do. In Houston, the next one I run is going to be much better, and it's always going to be building off of the last experience. How are you approaching uh, Houston mentally? I mean, it, it, it's got to be, I know you probably coached and, and told to approach it like it's any other race, but I'm sure with what's on the line, with the shot at the Olympics on the line, it's got to be hard to do that. So, so how are you kind of balancing that in, in your own head with the way you approach this race mentally? No, honestly, I'm I'm approaching it just like it is, and it's you know in some ways it's the biggest race of my career, and for me that that fuels me. I love that. You know, I've always run well when I felt like my back was against the wall, and in some ways it is. This is my one and only opportunity to be an Olympian in the uh, marathon for 2012. So, you know, that's that's a lot of uh, motivation, just that in itself. So I'm definitely going into this race, you know, expecting to do big things and. You know, just run, run my own race, and you know, play to my strengths, and not do, not try to be someone I'm not. And I think if I do that, I'll be successful. Now, Simon, you've represented your country uh, before um, on a big stage. For for you know, for for people that have never had the opportunity to to do that, um, can you speak to what that's like to wear the uh, the Canadian jersey and and to represent Canada? Yeah, you know, I I still remember the first time I put on the uh, the Canadian singlet and. You know, it just it gives you chills. You know, you're you're representing your country, and you know you have so many people back home who are you know watching online or following it on Twitter or whatever it may be. And it's just to have you know your country supporting you, and you know you being out there representing your country, and you know in some ways you're an ambassador 
to your country. And, you know, those those are things that I don't take for granted. Um, you know, that's I think it's a privilege to be in that position, and it's something that is important to me. And every time I wear that Canadian singlet, I expect you know to give my best uh, on that given day. You gave us a little bit of insight into your uh, into your training. I know uh, I've been reading about some of the, what you've been doing, and it sounds like you've been going really hard uh, and and been training also with some other uh, very accomplished runners. What's your training been like these past uh, several months? Yeah, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs in the training. Uh, the one probably most important thing that I've learned is you know recovery is just as important as you know those hard days where you're hammering you know 20 mile long runs. So I've made sure to really put in there, you know, two days a week where I'm just jogging really, really easy. I mean, if you were to see me jogging, you could never tell that I'm a, you know, I'm a professional athlete. That's, you know, that's how slow I'm running out there. So it's, you know, those days are important and, you know, it's, it's been kind of hard for me to realize that. Like, I've always thought, you know, you got to run hard every day if you want to be, if you want to beat the best, but that's really not true. And I think that's something that has helped me have better hard days is, not only having, you know, uh, easier, easy days, but also making sure I'm doing the right things with diet and sleep, you know, making sure I'm taking my uh, gen you can before and after, you know, every run as opposed to just the hard workout days. And I think the little things like that have really helped me, uh, you know, tackle our hard workouts to a degree that I haven't been able to in the past. Yeah, and how have you been using that you can in your training and, and how do you plan to use it on race day? Yeah, I mean, honestly, when I'm when I'm packing my bags, it's my my shorts, my singlet, my racing shoes, and my Denu can. It's pretty much a requirement for me. You know, I I take that stuff about an hour before the race, and I make sure that it's the first thing I take after the race. And for me, it's just it's part of training. You know, diet is important. Making sure you, what you put into the body is going to fuel you and help you and not deter your uh, your performance is something that. I've really tried to stay on top of it. And for me, Zen You Can does that. It helps me run at my optimal when I'm out there racing. The idea of a You Can moment in your in your running career, um, you know, that moment where you're able to overcome some, some obstacle in your way and, and push through with that You Can attitude, um, is, is there something in your running career up to this point that you can identify as that moment for you? Well, you know what? I, if, yeah, if you were to ask me that question, or if you were to ask me that question Sunday afternoon, you know, I'm hoping to tell you that it's, uh, you know, the Houston Marathon. So that's, I think, my you can moment is going to be this weekend. I'm really feeling like this is going to be a, a great performance. Uh, you know, the, everything's kind of lined up, and you know, I'm I'm going to put it all out there. And I think that is the spirit of you can just, you know, giving it your best, and you know, just racing to the point where you not only want to, but you just you feel like you need that, and that's. You know, those last few miles is going to be, you know, me against the clock, and I'm racing like I need to run the standard, not I want to run the standard. So, for me, that's going to be the you can moment. Best of luck to you, Simon. Um, have a great race this weekend. We're all pulling for you, and, uh, you know, it sounds like you've been training real hard, and you're uh, primed to have a great race. So, best of luck to you in Houston this weekend. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. You've been listening to the Generation You Can podcast. For more information on the sports nutrition of elite and everyday runners, visit GenerationUCan.com.